This is Echo 3, and let's discuss farming in space. On the 12th of May, the University of Florida and NASA conducted an experiment using lunar soil to test growing plants. Recognizing the importance of this study, I have added the life support mod, USI, to my game. I'm designing this rocket to be able to land on the Mun's south pole and return back to Kerbin. For a variety of reasons, NASA thinks that the south pole is the best location for the next moon mission. The South Pole does have some unique advantages, such that the high points are able to maintain constant sunlight and contact with Earth, yet down inside a crater, it is protected from solar radiation and there seems to be water ice in there. The upper stage of my rocket has enough life support for six days and enough Delta V starting from the Mun's orbit to land and return back to Kerbin. So a MUN mission in the game takes about two Kerbal days or just about 12 hours, but in real life, it would take about a week to go from the surface of the Earth to moon surface and back. The second stage of my rocket has enough Delta V to depart Kerbin and get into orbit around the MUN. And my bottom stage here is for getting into orbit around Kerbin. The main engines don't have any gimbling, so I'm using some twitch engines for attitude control during ascent. We don't have quite enough Delta V yet for a MUN mission, so we're going to add a couple boosters to the side, and that will finish off the design for this rocket. The Soviet-style parts are from the Making History DLC. Now, we just need to check our staging, make sure our rocket is properly strutted together, and this thing should be ready for a mission to the Mun surface and back to Kerbin, delivering our Kerbal safely both ways. When I was a new player, I used to way over-engineer my rockets, like my Mun rockets would cost 150,000 funds. Now they are much simpler designs, and this little thing is able to easily go to the Mun and back. Here in the Midwest, we are in the middle of planting season, but I have been very curious about what it'd be like to plant crops on the moon. I had been doing research on what it'd be like to grow crops on the moon, but some of the information I was wanting, I was having a hard time finding. And I think a lot of that is that information was just figured out with the study that was released on the 12th. There had been some studies on trying to grow crops in simulated lunar soil, but this was the first major study I could find where they tried growing a plant in actual lunar soil. This University of Florida study used regolith that was collected from the Apollo 11, Apollo 12, and Apollo 17 missions. The study used Arabidopsis seeds planted in just 0.9 grams of lunar soil. So the university was able to plant quite a few different samples being that NASA gave them 12 grams of soil to work with. Scientists then watered and gave nutrients to each of the different regolith samples, but I wasn't sure exactly what nutrients were added to the soil to help the plants grow. That's something I'd like to find out a little bit more there. In my area, we talk about the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur that's in our soil, and we will add appropriately to what's needed to help our crops grow. On screen, I'm setting up my South Pole landing, and I'm going to be using the Kerbal Engineer Redo Landing Prediction to help me land spot on next to this base that's here. If humanity is wanting to spend more time on the lunar surface, then we are going to have to figure out how to use the resources that are there to help take care of ourselves. While the presence of water ice does excite NASA and others for a reason to go to the South Pole, we don't know much about the soils that are there, and that'll be some very interesting research to be done to find out what is the soil composition like there, and is it even good for growing crops in. The seeds planted in the lunar soil were all able to sprout, but they did not grow the same as seeds planted in Earth soil. All of the plants planted in the lunar regolith showed signs of stress, but it was different depending on what location the soil came from between Apollo 11, 12, and 17. The soil samples from the Apollo 11 site showed the most amount of stress, and some of that they think is that that area was exposed to more cosmic radiation, and that may be contributing to the soil being poor for the plants. Some of the soil from the Apollo 17 landing site would probably have been from a lunar lava flow and was probably younger soil. The plants planted in that seem to show less signs of stress. 
but all of the plants did demonstrate a phosphate deficiency. One of the most interesting parts of the study was that they did genetic testing on all of the plants. And genetic testing like this has been done on plants grown on the International Space Station. And it's interesting that plants grown in different environments, that the plant will turn on and off different of its genes. So it'll express different genes. And with some of the lunar soil, the genes expressed differently in those plants. The scientists weren't even sure what those genes were responsible for. I will link the article containing this study in the video description. If you have any recommendations for future content, please let me know. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about growing plants on the moon. I will see you next time.